Hey everybody, how you doing? I, I am coming to you today and I am giving you my Fear Free Cancer series here. Um, and I wanted to talk a little bit about the biopsy that I had. And as you know, I teach the internal guidance system, which is an expansion and a contraction. And the contraction is fear and anxiety and overwhelm and, and frustration and irritation and all those things. It's closing, which means what I'm thinking isn't true and isn't going to happen. And I want to relate that a little bit to what happened. I did have some closing thoughts, which were fearful around the biopsy. So what happened for me is, is I am not, I have not in the past been good with pain. It, it, it's really hard for me. Um, and so if you've, ever, if you've ever studied with me, you know that I was really, really, really afraid of needles. And then as I began to work with my IGS and I began to really examine where my fears were coming from, I realized that I was set up as a little kid to hate shots, that the fear of going in and the reaction of everybody at having to give a little kid a shot really created in me that this was something dire, that, that adults didn't want to have to do to me, but they had to, and that it was going to be an awful experience, that, so awful that they have to give you candy or some reward at the end in order for you to get through it. So I was really set up to be afraid. And later in my late 20s, as I began to really get this internal guidance system thing, I began to realize that I had more control over pain in my body than I thought. And so what I did was, is I had to go in and get some, some blood drawn and um, a couple of shots because I was going traveling. And I decided to only experience the shot as naming the sensation that I was feeling. And so what that looked like was, I didn't still watch the needle going in or anything. I turned my head, I closed my eyes, I took a deep breath, and then I began to catalog. And I was like, okay, so there's a cold rubbing of the alcohol, and that just feels kind of chill, chilly. And then there's a, a pushing, like a tourniquet thing that goes around my arm, and that just feels tight, and, it, and my fingers begin to throb a little bit and feel fat. And then I felt the needle go in, and it felt like pressure. It didn't really hurt, it just felt like a pressure. And then there was a heat, and then the pressure, the heat was gone and the pressure stayed. And then that pressure got jiggled around a lot as they were changing out blood vials and things. And then they, there was a pulling, like a, a like a, a, like a light, slight pulling on the area where there was pressure. And then a cotton swab with tape put over the top of it, held with pressure to keep the blood in and then taped off and then releasing of the tourniquet. And actually there was, I just sat there relaxed, feeling my hands and feet, which we call dropping into your listening and being really seriously present with that experience. And I, it didn't hurt. It really actually didn't hurt. And so then I got two other shots and they, and it was literally, they, they gave me a shot in the um, shoulder. There was a, a pinching, which it was really fast. The pinching was even smaller because I, it, the needle didn't stay in like an IV. And there was a, like a pressure and a heat and a little bit of a sore feeling, like if you hit your leg on a coffee table, like ouch, but not even as bad as a coffee table if you hit your leg on a coffee table, just a soreness. And then they pulled it out and they put a, a pressure on it for the blood and then they gave me a round band-aid and my arm was a little bit sore, like my bro little brother had punched it. You know, when you're a little kid, you get that pow, punch in the shoulder. And, and that was it, it was gone. And so it really eradicated my fear of pain and my inability to manage it. And I have had pain that I, it's been really hard for me to drop into my listening and feel as a sensation for a long duration, but I could do it for a small amount of time. So then I was um, not worried about this biopsy because of this experience that I've had, but then uh, people around me began telling me that it's, it's one of the most painful experiences they've ever had, that it was probably one of the worst experiences, that the pain afterward is absolutely horrible. Um, and I began to think, oh no, I'm not going to be able to take this. This is going to be awful. And they also told me that the pro part of the problem is, is you're sitting on the table, getting these needles pushed into you for up to 45 minutes to an hour. So I was going to be in this experience of pain for a long duration of time. And I started becoming afraid. Fear is always closing, which means what I'm thinking is not true or not going to happen. What I'm thinking is not true or not going to happen. And I didn't catch the fear of the pain of the biopsy right away. Um, I had one particular person tell me who's, that she has a super high tolerance for pain and that this was one of the most painful things she's ever been through. 
So about a day, this was all about three or four days before the, leading up to the biopsy that I was like, oh God, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. And I started, and I, and I didn't catch the closings. It was a few days where I had this little niggling fear of the coming event. And then I caught it. I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm afraid when I'm, I'm thinking that this is going to be really painful and I'm not going to be able to handle it and it's going to be hor horrific and I'm, you know, going to look bad and, and go through this experience. I could just picture myself laying there with my naked old boob out on the thing, out on the table. And I had to have three needles. They're the core needles. They're the larger needles with a hole in the center of them. I had to have those in there and they're going to put these clips in. And I was really exaggerating in my brain about how bad this was going to be. And it caught it. I'm like, wait a minute, I'm tight. I have a sick feeling in the top of my stomach and my chest is tight. Every time I hold the thought that I can't handle this, it's going to be horrible and I can't do it. And I realized that I was following the closing thoughts. So I stopped and I was like, I can handle this. I know how to do pain. I know how to do needles. And immediately my body started opening back up. And so I got there and when I moved into the, I just dropped into my listening before I even moved into the biopsy room. That means feeling your feet and your hands and listening to the sounds around you. Your mind quiets if you put two or more senses in t as a focus. And I teach students how to do this because what it does is it brings you right into the body, right into being present. And then if you, when you're out of your mind, the present moment always holds a delight, a love, a, a pleasure, a confidence that doesn't exist when you're simply residing in your mind. And I know there's a lot more to this. It's actually a fairly simple concept, but there's a lot more to it. Um, that you, There's little practices that you do to learn how to do this in, in tough situations. So I'm not making light of it, you know, but um, I got in and I got on the table and then the nurse told me um, that the doctor often does not give enough pain meds. And if I needed more pain medication to tell her because she will make him give me more topical anesthesia to numb the pain. And I thought, I'm not going to need that. And I opened. And it was like a good, like that, 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 that take inhaling of breath, that. So I just laid there in my listening and I just let them know that I needed to focus on the sensations in my body and, and just to relax and that I could do this. And so we're going through the whole thing and I'm being numbed and, and then the procedure is happening. And there was a couple moments I was just laying there with my eyes closed, breathing, focusing on my hands and feet, listening to their voices, and then also noticing any minute tension, I would breathe into it, no matter where it was. I, my hand would start to clench or my back. And that's where I put my focus was on releasing tension. And I felt this incredible sense of warmth and, and pleasantness and love in my body. Now I know this sounds probably Pollyanna and crazy and weird, but I swear, this is how I've been experiencing this when I do my the practices, do I do my practices that for that I've developed for my own life. And the doctor said to me, you're so calm. I, he's 83 years old and he said, I've done over 3000 of these biopsies and you're probably one of the calmest, top five calmest people that I've ever done. Most people are, are, are leaping and screaming out and asking for more medication and wiggling and telling me to stop and wait that they can't they have to wait they can't move forward anymore and and i was just laying there breathing in fact this other gal who was in training to do the ultrasound piece of the biopsy literally asked me are, are you meditating what are you doing on the table and i said no i i'm a spiritual teacher and i have this practices that i do and i'm just doing that and she goes really where's your work and i said smartsoulacademy.com and she wrote it down and so did the biopsy nurse said write that down for me too and which was really awesome but they noticed, they noticed that I was doing something different. So the other piece is, is that the doctor said, I don't normally do this, but I just want to let you know, I've, I've, I've looked at all the results. It's one of the things I do. I make sure I look at the results so I can match what I've seen on the scan and with what ha has happened in the lab. And he said, this is, this is not benign. And this is the kind of cancer, it looks like the kind of cancer in the way that it's shaped, that it, it comes back. It's, it, it, it's comes back again and again. It's like a, uh, like every six months. And he said, so as you're hearing your news and getting the ideas of how to manage this, just please keep that in mind um, so that you can 
make the right decisions for yourself. And I said, thank you. And he goes, and I don't normally say that, but you're just so calm. And I said, I, I feel great about that. Thanks for the information. It will really help me in figuring out how I want to do this. Because I have two kids, seven and 12, and I'm staying. I'm open that I'm staying. So it's nice to have the information to know how light or how heavy to uh, do the path that I'm on in this experience. So I just wanted to share that with you because I think no matter where we are in life with things that happen that, are, that feel to our mind as if it's dire and horrible and bad, right? I think there's a way through it in not listening, in not, it's not that not listening to other people, but it's in really examining whether their words and their experience is going to be true for you, especially with cancer, right? Or disease or, you know, some dire thing. We've got a lot of dire things, right? That are seeming to come up and, and people are scaring each other from the media to our personal friends and family. Everybody's looking at scaring each other um, are deeply concerned and we should know and I think all those things it's important for people to care about one another and share their information I'm not saying that but not that person's information may not be the right information for you and it's and if you're closed if you're feeling fear that means what you're thinking that's is not true or not going to happen and if you're feeling pressured or you're feeling as if you need to push your truth because you're tight inside feeling irritated and aggravated and you're feeling the need to tell your truth to someone else to have them listen to you about it double check it because you're not open and opening begets opening so when someone is it comes from a place of opening and tells you something it comes across as a clarity a discernment a truth and when somebody comes across closed and kind of in this fear place or irritation or anger frustration place you can feel it and the first thing that happens is our is there's a protective so if this video is really about how number one I I, I dealt with the body in a way of just really getting totally clear and present with what it was really feeling, not what my mind thought it was going to feel. And number two, I got off track a little bit in listening to how it was going to be because of it was how it was going to, how it was for others and not truly dropping in and going, wait, I'm closed for a few days. I was like, I'm closed. That's not how it's going to be for me. It's just not going to be that way for me. So little moments, but I'm still open and I feel great and I'm joyous and happy about everything, really. And um, I've got a couple more things I want to share today. I'm going to do another video because I like to keep them short and sweet and to one subject. And the next one's going to be on sharing this with people, you know, your diagnosis with people. And I think it applies to sharing any news about yourself with people. Um, so it's, it could be good for anyone to listen to, but thanks for being here and sending you love and blessings. And I hope this is valuable to please subscribe or have somebody send it to somebody who might need to hear this, how to have a fear-free cancer journey. And like I said, I'm sending you love and blessings. Bye.